Good day, and welcome back to the baby toy infested layer of Growing Up Otaku. Last time we took a look at the Unlive Cloud video gaming micro console. This time I wanted to go ahead and show you what we can do with the PC client. I got this beautiful little laptop here I just got done setting up for the missus. This is going to be a great demo. This thing is rocking a uh, Phenom x2 at 3 gigahertz we got 4 gig of ram in here uh it's got a radeon mobility it's a 4000 series but it's going to be more than enough for our needs we're going to have all okay what i'm using it i'm i was going to do another on live for youtube but i they did you watch madoka magica like three times yesterday oh they don't know i can act or Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yeah, I love you too. And what the baby? I'm using bunny dog for the with. Yes, dear. Um, uh, uh, systems. Sys, okay. Uh, tech in here in a wire, half a freaking Korea. I gotta have a spare. Ah! So, like I said, um, this is the this is the uh, this is the Asus EPC 900, and uh, this was the second netbook to reach mass market. It's rocking a 900 megahertz Celeron M. Uh, I upgraded it to one gig of RAM and it has a four gigabyte SSD hard drive that uh well frankly I have thumb drives that run faster. So we're, we're uh, going to use this uh I got this this quality netbook I Got as a refurb on special from Woot.com for 150 bucks, and uh, we're going to take a look at the OnLive Cloud Gaming PC client with it. Before we do that, I want to go out. I'm going to capture some HD video off of the web, just to give you an idea as to how well this um, value-packed PC performs under uh, conditions such as <laughs> streaming HD video off of the uh, internet. This is a great machine. I've made a couple of modifications myself, such as putting a horribly scaled back version of Windows XP on it to reduce the proprietary Asus Linux. Um, and really that's about it. It has uh, in the past, given me years of joy staring at a progress bar. So, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to open a web browser. We're going to take a little break and uh, let this load. I'm going to come back with some captured video streaming off of the internet on some of the games we will be taking a look at today. Very smart in the game with finding the new content as you're going around the land. Different things are happening to you. The designers are introducing different features. Each slab isn't the same. Each slab changes. The sides are kind of thinking a bit more out of the box. Think about some environments that could really offer up truly spectacular moments rather than just the average stuff that you see in most games. The dockyards, airports, you know, it's the sort of thing you don't really see in most racing games. What's really cool in the cars is that as you start the game and as you go through, you, you get given these 30 cars. You get all of them by winning episodes of the TV show. As you play through the game, you unlock certain achievements. These 
is tuned that's actually represented on your car as decals. So when you're racing online, you see some guy and his car's covered in stickers. You know he's an expert and be careful. And instead of slightly you know, empty a car, that's pretty new to the game. It really means that the car. Red Faction Gorilla introduces a new third-person perspective and open-world sandbox gameplay. It puts you in the shoes of a rebel with a cause. Mars has turned out to be a great place for mining. Unfortunately, it's turned out to be a terrible place for living thanks to an abusive occupying military group called the Earth Defense Force. Alec Mason is a miner with a score to settle and a reason to fight, picking up his hammer to join the rebellion and strike a blow for the people. For a game focused on destroying things, a super-powered sledgehammer is a good start, but there are many more devastating tools of the trade to use against your vile oppressors. Remote mining charges are one of the most useful, letting you set up separate blasts or one huge potential pile of kaboom before detonating at will. A thermobaric rocket also packs quite a punch, and when you're fighting a revolution, you can safely disregard the safety instructions for your welding equipment. A great number of vehicles also play a large part in the destruction, providing you a convenient way to move around the game's extremely large world, and giving you access to some pretty impressive firepower. Just make sure you're not rolling over and blowing up your own guys. You want to keep hope alive if you want to succeed. Metro 2013. 33 has an intriguing premise behind it. Based on a Russian novel by author Dmitry Gluhovsky, the game takes place in post-apocalyptic Moscow. After a nasty nuclear catastrophe, the world's surface has become inhospitable to life. The people of Moscow took shelter in giant subway tunnels, and each station is basically its own city. You play as Artyom. A normal civilian who is tasked with delivering a very cryptic message to another populated station. Without giving too much away, the story is very cool and takes some surprising turns. With that said, the story's strength is mainly because of the game's awesome atmosphere. The main character is like Half-Life's Gordon Freeman. He doesn't talk at all, and no one... Almost everything in Metro 2033 is from his point of view. This is good as a means for immersion, but not so good when it comes to character development. Actually, Ardium narrates his own diary entries between levels. The game's presentation is one of its strongest aspects. It was made by 4A Games, a studio based in Ukraine. As a result, it has a pretty unique atmosphere that isn't often seen in American games. The tone is dark, and there's constant fear and dread around every corner. So, now that we've established a nice baseline as to the uh, performance of this particular netbook, let's go ahead and launch on live and see how we do in real interactive games. Also, you will note today we are running on Wi-Fi. Just to further stack the deck and get in a couple more lulls here. Alright. Well, for our first game of the day, let's take a look at Split Second. The downtown circuit looks spectacular, guys. And that's it, it's loaded.
Obviously, this particular system has uh, no actual discrete video solution of its own. It's a Intel. It's an Intel chipset. Past that, I'm really not sure. I tweaked it out so it is running at a 1024 by 768 resolution. not seem to have a left control key. Uh, this is maybe this button is uh, these buttons are labeled differently because as I said this the system originally came with a customized version of Linux on it and not Windows. I'm going to pull back a little bit, I'd like you guys to actually be able to see when I push a button so that you really to gauge the responsiveness yourself. Whoops. doesn't seem to be a control key. And I can't map. Let's put her in a while. Since I can't find the key to make things go boom, we'll, uh, we'll manufacture our own. Let's quit out of this mode. Very good. Maybe not those and uh Let's get our multiplayer on. That was not an edit, that was just good luck. It's a little choppy, not bad, very playable. You can hear the sound crackling a little bit.
Obviously our uh, performance isn't hampering us up too. Uh, so they are affecting there. We're not being hampered to the point where we can make it into second for a while. Blur our guy up. There we go. Uh, needless to say, that would probably have been the first pixel shader effect that this particular system has ever even thought about seeing. Usually it takes me a little while to get warmed up too. Ugh. Also sitting a good deal further back than I normally would be when, whoop, that was close. when attempting to play on a 9 inch screen. Put that corner, didn't I? I'm sure there are going to be some of you out there who simply cringe at the fact of attempting to play a racing game with a keyboard. Uh, if you have a wired or a PC compatible Xbox 360 controller, you can plug that in. OnLive recognizes it natively. It is its preferred controller. Uh, there are also a few other third-party sticks that will work just fine. There you go. Here's a Pretty terrible race. Oh, there are a couple of other guys behind me, though, surprisingly. So, uh, third for fifth. Third for fifth. On the, the second netbook available to Western markets. Running on Wi Fi. Alright. Yeah, we are going to move on seamlessly to uh, my Ender Keys a little sticky. So our second game of the day we're going to be taking a look at Red Faction Gorilla.
the good news here is that if you saw my previous video on the on life micro console I now have a save game much farther in and uh, we're just going to be able to hop in a big old truck and start driving through buildings without much of a problem also with an accelerated uh, rather increased enemy response the short form of what I'm trying to say is big bada boom Okay, uh, I'm going to need my WADS keys, and I'm going to have to use the trackpad as a mouse. Okay. And, uh, I should probably have a gun ready. Why do they always make the roads coming out of the safe houses so small in this game? Uh, space bars up there. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, that's probably the uh, first batch of physics calculations this system has ever had to perform. And again. That's a big truck. This is a garbage truck. Well, there would have been more to blow up if I had not already blown up most of the stuff in this area. I should have had a different save game. But I don't want to throw an edit in here let you guys think I'm pulling any kind of tricks. Responsiveness on the controls is not not as tight as it was in split second. But again, nice playable.
the head truck's not moving anymore. That track probably is just driving me bugo. The lightning gun apparently doesn't blow up gas stations. Control. Yeah, that control blows stuff up. That's a little bit of red faction right there. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some. Uh, anybody's in the multiplayer. Today. Oh, this is their weirdo hot seat mode. Uh, and find my keys one more time. Ah, <laughs> miss me. Take that gravity. the online interface, we'll hit exit game. Alright, and the next one, the next one I want to show you, I do not actually have an online version of. We're going to look at the, uh, the current favorite PC benchmark, Metro 2033. Uh, you may remember Crisis from a few years back as being the high watermark of PC graphics. Uh, Metro 2033 is the latest. And, uh, this is another great, you can just hit free trial. And this will let us sample the game for 30 minutes. This is a feature available to practically all games on the online platform. Don't feel like downloading a demo? Crank up online. Just go in here, click on whatever you want. Uh, the total application install footprint is just under 8 megs, if I recall correctly. And of course, all of our game data 
Well, we don't get it. That's it's an on lives data center. Yeah, I think we're going to set this to, to easy. Not, not getting along with that touchpad very well. Emilio and I were close to the surface now. Soon. And this would be the uh, first taste of DirectX 11. That this uh, four or five year old netbook has ever seen. We'll have to get through the military outpost to reach the surface. It's a little dark in here. No complaints about responsiveness here. If I had an external mouse hooked in, plugged in at the moment. Uh, this one's really running, running very well. I recognize this sequence from the uh, demo video we were just streaming earlier. Tap to click. Slide this one in just because it's so pretty, and uh, you've had a chance to. 
watch me push buttons. You know. And that will conclude our look at the OnLive video game service PC client. What have we learned today? Well, using a $150 netbook on Wi-Fi, we can play games better than we can watch them online. Service is free. Software is free. Go ahead, give it a shot. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you see. Stop by and visit us sometime at www.growingupotaku.com, and I'll see you next time.